In the 80s, the world of supercars was monopolized by Ferrari, Lamborghini and Porsche. However, in the 1990s, the automotive world began to seek out something new, and supercar revolutionaries and determined companies emerged. Manufacturers from Asia, the US and Europe sought out to shake up the supercar space, and one of the less known American contributors was the Vector Aeromotive Corporation. Vector Aeromotive Corporation, founded by industry veteran Gerald Wigert in Wilmington, California, produced the Vector W8 Twin Turbo, which shook the automotive world with a style that stood out and was totally different. Now, despite not having a brand heritage or prestige to rely on, Wigert had his own tactics and said, the idea is to build a reputation, not ride on one. This message resonated enough with people to gather enthusiasm and investors, raising more than $13 million of capital and expanding operations into a 35,000 square foot facility. The Vector W8 Twin Turbo was powered by a 6-liter mid-engine rear-wheel drive V8 and this supercar had 625 horsepower and, well, let's call it an extroverted body composed out of mostly carbon fiber. Now, Vector Aeromotive Corporation built a car with out-of-this-world, on-paper specifications that wouldn't feel out of place in a dialogue about today's supercars. The mid-mounted unit produced an advertised 625 horsepower at 5,700 rpm and 649 foot-pounds of torque or 880 newton meters of torque at 4,900 rpm. That's crazy power for an early 90s supercar. And this power was at 8 pounds of boost, which could be adjusted by the driver. The Garrett turbocharger's boost pressure could be adjusted by the driver up to a maximum of 14 PSI, with Vector Aeromotive Corporation claiming that this would allow the engine to output an astronomical 1200 horsepower. I just want to state that that power output is claimed. I tried to find some verified data on the power, but all I could get was claims made by the manufacturer. Now, this engine was mated to a 3-speed automatic transmission sourced from Oldsmobile, which was appropriately fortified to withstand the demands of this new engine, and then it was fitted to a glensen torsen differential. All of this contributed to highly impressive performance figures for the time, and to be honest, they aren't even bad by today's standards. The rear-wheel driven Vector W8 Twin Turbo was capable of achieving 60 in just 3.9 seconds, and could complete the standing quarter mile in 12 seconds at 124 miles per hour. By comparison, this meant that it was faster than the Ferrari F40, the Bugatti EB110 and the Jaguar XJ220. And it didn't stop there. Vector claimed that the W8 could reach a projected top speed of 242 miles per hour or 389 kilometers per hour. That's crazy numbers. In fact, that would make it the fastest car of the time, but Vector never did any verified speedruns. Road and Track magazine in its March 1991 issue recorded a 0-60 time of 4.2 seconds, which is just 0.3 seconds slower than was claimed by the company. And despite not conducting an actual top speed test, Road and Track provided an estimated top speed of 218 miles per hour, 351 kilometers per hour. This was based on the redline RPM of the W8's top gear and its 3-speed automatic transmission, which would still make it the fastest car, even beating out the later McLaren F1. And they didn't stop at straight line speed. The W8 Twin Turbo was designed with a focus on more than just power, as its suspension was also crafted with a state-of-the-art approach to provide a car with both dexterity and poise. The front suspension featured a double wishbone independent setup with adjustable Kony shocks, concentric springs and anti-roll bar. Meanwhile, the rear suspension boasts a De Dion rear axle with diagonal trailing links, also fitted with a set of adjustable Kony shocks and concentric springs. She was also fitted with a braking system to match, with 13-inch vented rotors all round and 4-port aluminium calipers in both the front and rear. And then the tires for the W8 Twin Turbo were specially made Michelin XGT Plus tires, measuring at 255 45-16s in the front and 315 40-16s in the rear. Now these specially made tires were mounted to bespoke wheels forged to the specification of each individual buyer when they would place the order of the car. Pretty freaking cool if you ask me. Unfortunately, all of this wasn't enough. 
Although the Vector W8 twin turbo was ahead of its time, the company's financial troubles and eventual dissolution caused the car to fall behind the perpetually shifting curve. Only 17 customer cars were built, plus two prototypes, before production was eventually ceased. Today, the W8 twin turbo has a small but formidable cult following. It is considered a classic unicorn car, which is on the radar of many private collectors. Examples come up for sale every now and again and are able to fetch huge sums of money. From about $200,000 for restoration projects to as much as a million dollars for a mint example. Now despite things not really taking off for Vector Aeromotive Corporation, Wegot had still achieved his goal of shaking up the automotive industry by producing a supercar like no other before it. Some would even argue that the Vector W8 Twin Turbo has forged a distinguishable legacy, putting the US on the map as a serious superpower by setting the stage for the production of future supercars with a Made in America distinction, such as the Hennessy Venom GT and the Celine S7. In conclusion, while the supercar market was still mostly dominated by European companies, the Vector W8 showed us what America was capable of, even though I think some of the claims made by the company were slightly exaggerated. But let me know down below what you think of this car. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I'm not gonna lie, I'm not really a fan of the styling. It's, it's, it's not pretty, but maybe you like it. Everybody's got a different taste when it comes to design, so it all depends on what you like. Um, and then if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you like all of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.